Hello everybody, it's your immigration attorney, Luis Ruiz, and you apply for your green card, your interview notice is here, and you're freaking out. Don't be. I'm here to help you. I'm going to walk you through the interview process so that you know what's going to happen at your permanent resident card interview or your adjustment of status interview. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, the do's and don'ts, how you should act, how you should behave. And we're going to walk you through it. By the end of this video, you should be more confident in the process and more confident in that everything's going to be well. So this is for spousal based petitions. So who has to show up? Your, uh, your petitioner, meaning the person who, who has status in the United States and has petitioned for uh, the beneficiary. That's the person who does not have status and who's looking to obtain status. So both the petitioner and the beneficiary have to be present at the interview. Uh, if one or both par uh, parties do not speak English, then the officer at the interview is going to be able to call an interpreter so that they can be available. Some offices do require that you bring your own interpreter, uh, but since COVID, I believe everybody, all the offices are, are able to call an interpreter on their uh, dime so that they can help uh, with the interview. So the whole purpose of the interview is to make sure that you qualify for a permanent resident card, that the beneficiary is someone we want in the United States and that the petitioner and the beneficiary are in a good faith marriage, that you did not commit fraud to get a green card, that you didn't get married just so that you can help your best friend get their green card so that you can help, uh, you know, Mary who paid you $15,000 to get a green card. So that's what the interview is for. The officer is going to look at your body language. They're going to look at how you answer questions, who can answer the questions, who can't answer questions, who doesn't know dates or certain information. The whole purpose is to verify that you are in a good faith marriage and that everything that you're saying is true and correct. That doesn't mean you have to get all the answers, right? Because as in every relationship, in every marriage, there's one person that doesn't know stuff, right? They don't know the date of marriage. They don't know when your anniversary is. They don't know the kids' birthdays. That happens a lot. So it's not a shock to immigration. But what they're looking at is they're looking at, uh, do you know detailed information about your spouse? And that is what the kind of questions that come up. For example, they ask, have you met your spouse's parents before? Or have, do you know how many siblings they have? Have you met their siblings? And I always tell my clients, don't be scared of the right answer. Some of my clients have never met their, their spouse's parents because their spouse's parents do not live in the United States or because they don't have a good relationship with their parents. So the, the, the right answer is always the truth. And I do tell my clients, don't overshare but you definitely have to share enough to communicate the why. Because if they ask you, hey, how many times have you met your spouse's parent? And you've been married for five years and you say none, that's going to be, that could be a red flag. But if you say, I've never met my, uh, my spouse's parents because they live in Guatemala and we're not able to travel, but we speak on FaceTime. That's the, the same answer is no, but you've given a reason why. Now, you don't ever want to overshare with immigration because they're like the cops. They can, they can and will use anything against you. But what you can do is you can explain why. I, you know, if they say, have you met her father and your, your spouse, you've never met her, her, her father, then you need to say, no, she does not have a relationship with her father. So I've never met him, you know? And that's what they look at. They want to know what you know relating to your spouse they want to know and if you and if you don't have the the right answer then why and explain it and that makes your answer the right answer because you we life is very different for everyone not everyone comes from a two-parent household not everyone has relationships with their parents not everyone has relationships with their siblings and that's okay you just have to be able to explain why without oversharing too much um, another thing that they ask is, well, what do y'all do for fun? You know, so one of the things that a lot of officers do is they, they say, well, what do you do for fun? And you say, oh, well, we like going to the movies and they'll pull out two little pieces of paper and they'll give one to each and they'll say, what was the last movie you saw? Or what, if you say, you know, we love to go out to eat, 
then they'll say, well, you write your favorite restaurant and your spouse's favorite restaurant and we'll match the answers, right? Now, I always tell my clients, don't be scared if you get the wrong answer, if it doesn't match, as long as you can explain why, right? So I had one interaction at the, uh, at the Im Im immigration and the officer said that same question, what's your favorite restaurant and what's your favorite restaurant? And the answers did not match. But it wasn't a problem because then when the author said, hey, these don't match, you know, one spouse turns over and says, that's not even your favorite restaurant. And they had a little tiff. It was a joke, right? It was not serious. It was not a real fight. But that is a natural reaction to the question. And the officer is looking not just at the answers on the paper, but they're looking at how you interact with your spouse. You know, for example, I have a lot of clients that cannot remember birth dates. They cannot remember an anniversary date. So what I say is just be natural. If that's something that you know is that this your spouse is not going to get right and it comes up at the interview and they get it wrong, make a crack a joke. Say he never he doesn't even know his own birthday. So I'm not surprised he doesn't know when we were married. Uh, so it's a joke. It's a way to lighten the situation and to communicate to the officer this is common. He doesn't know when he doesn't know his own information. So it, it it helps the officer see how you interact together and that you have a history of this question, right? Like you've had many fights over him not knowing your anniversary date, and that's why that's what happens. That's life. That's real life. And as long as you're being real and truthful, you should not have a problem with immigration. It is not your responsibility to show to immigration that you live your marriage in a way that they like or in a way that the officer lives his or her marriage privately. Our job in my office, what I tell my clients is to prove that the way you choose to live your marriage is the way that immigration is valid and true. And immigration does have to respect that. So we have a lot of uh, clients in unconventional relationships that, you know, they don't they don't mix money. Both spouses have separate financials because they talk, they said to me, the number one cause of divorce is money. So we're not even going to commingle our money and then we'll have a happy life. That's okay. The officer I said, well, where's proof, you know, that you commingle your funds? We didn't provide that. We told them we didn't have to. And we told them why. We told them that the number one reason that divorce, that marriages fail is because of money. And they made a choice to live their life this way. And that's okay. That case was approved. My job is to tell immigration, that show immigration that your marriage is valid despite or in whichever way you live it. As long as you're being truthful and honest, we can take care of that for you. Another thing is that they're not just going to look at your body language or the way you're answering questions. They're going to ask for hard proof. So they are going to ask for more bona fides, more proof of the marriage at the interview. So typically what we do is we file your application with proof of your marriage. But then when we get your interview, and in Houston right now, it's taking almost two years to be scheduled for your interview. Uh, so we'll file it. And in those two years, we'll ask our clients to start putting evidence away in a different file. Every time your bill comes in, put it in here so that we already have it ready. Uh, and then at the interview, we provide additional bona fides. Now, there's some officers that maybe they're running behind and they're not able to review the bona fides or the additional evidence that you've brought. And then they just file it away because they know that they're not going to be able to give you a decision. That's okay. There's other officers who've already reviewed your file thoroughly. And the initial filing that we made was sufficient for an approval notice. They still take our evidence, but we get approved the same day. So don't be afraid if you don't get a decision this day. As long as you know that you're being truthful and you're being honest and you're in a good faith marriage and you show and you prove through your testimony at your interview, through the documents you provide, uh, as long as you're able to show that you're in a good faith marriage, that's the only requirement. And we're able to help with that. Our office, we prepare our clients two weeks prior to their interview. We have a mock interview here in our office where I pretend to be the officer. I do go to all of my spouse-based interviews uh, with all of my clients. Uh, but we do this two weeks prior, the prep. So it's a mock interview so that we can see what's wrong, what needs to be worked on, where, where we're at, right? We want a starting point and then we have two weeks to get to where we want to be.
Now, we don't tell our clients how to answer. We don't tell our clients how to be. We don't uh, do that. We tell them, be yourself. And a lot of the times what happens is we do the mock interview and they're both super nervous and they're getting basic questions wrong. And I'm like, hey, this is what this is for. You saw how you, were, you, you couldn't even tell me your name correctly. That's not normal, right? You're too nervous. So what we do the mock interview for is so that you can get those nerves out of your system. We've already, we've, we've done the interview. There won't be any surprises at the interview because I've, I prep my clients as best as I can and for the worst case scenario. So we leave here having gone through a mock interview, worst case scenario. I really just hammer in to make sure that they're ready. I've never had a situation where something happens in our interview that we were not prepared for or that our clients did not know how to handle because we prepare them for that always ahead of time. So if you've already filed your application, talk to your attorney. If you did it on your own and you're watching this video for some tips and tricks, here you go. You have this in the bag. As long as you're being truthful and honest, you'll be okay as long as you can show that your marriage is true and good. And that's going to be your verbal communication as to how y'all are answering questions, your nonverbal communication as to how you're interacting together non-verbally and verbally. They're going to see how you talk to each other if you talk to each other, right? So don't be too nervous. Just be confident in that if your marriage is true, you'll be okay. If you haven't filed your application yet, but you're you're doing some research or working, you know, the courage of, because a lot of people have real fears of, of dealing with immigration. Have no fear. I'm your immigration attorney, Luis Ruiz, and I'm here to help you. I'll take care of the process for you. I'll be at your interview for you. And our office has the experience and the skills to make sure that your case is successful. Give us a call.